and a prophecy wall for season five of Drama Time is upon you. I want to welcome you all to the Goldshire Inn, where we will, of course, be spending the next 12 months of drama. This is where we're going to be. We've got all kinds of cool shit going on. Oh, yes, we do. I just spotted a problem already. You see that? See that? The microphone's too high, so you can't see your subs. But we've got the blacklist over here. There we go. We've got our praise to Adrian. Get out of the way. The enemy. Get out of the way. We've got posters going on. ERP, that's going to be upstairs. You can see that. You can follow the ERP. We've got some. The Raiding Manifesto is here and welcome to stay for all time. You can see that all these little things have been put into, as well as many other treats that are prepared for you. You want to see your name on the list? That's what you want to see. You want to get your name on that list. You can indeed spam Mr. Ben Dog there. Uh, ben thanks you. Look at that. Ben thanks you. He's dreaming about you. As Ben, my dog, has a little sleep in the corner. Lots of little treats for you and all these kind of good things there. Thank you to Mr. Chunky Ninja, who has spent the last, like, four months building what you are going to be seeing throughout the next little while here, including redesigning our entire theme. We had a fresh theme for 2020, and there'll be a fresh theme every year. Now, the cool thing about this, let me just sort of like splurge on your face for a little while, is all of this shit here is built, like in a 3D world. It all exists. He's built it, which means we can add anything and everything you guys want so that means that we had our top tier patreon submit ideas about what they wanted to see we had wonderful people like lady bex put together all the drama time stuff that we could find and choose what to put into these scenes what things we think are relevant uh that means that we can add stuff we can add stuff over the year that you guys think we need that in there. We need this in there. We think that should be in there. That you why where is this? So we had things like the fish mask and all that kind of stuff. It was like we need the fish mask. We need the club for those of you who follow the live streams. All those kinds of things are all ready to be added in. Uh, so any suggestions you have, put them forward because this world exists. In fact, I, I believe this is actually like a pretty close replica to Goldshire Inn. And the camera can move and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so an XP potion. I mean, sure. <laughs> sure, if that's what you think is necessary to en enhance your enjoyment in some way. Uh, something like that. If that's what you think should be in there, Chunky Ninja is there to just send it to me and he can like update it from his side. Like half the shit I won't even know about. Uh, you can just plug it in and there you go. It exists. It's now a thing. So feel free to contribute your contribution. Feel free to throw your hat in the ring as something that you think will enhance your drama time experience. Uh, we're working with Streamlabs, who you probably have heard of. They run the, the notifications and stuff. I've been speaking with their top dudes. And hopefully what we'll be able to do in the future, or near future, is in fact when people sub, uh, send bits, donations, all that kind of stuff, they'll actually be able to affect something in the background. Uh, they'll be able to get Ben to get up and walk around. They'll be able to get stuff to happen. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe... Maybe a cook will walk by. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a cook who just decides to pop by. Uh, something like that, depending on whatever you do in the stream uh, to make these kinds of things happen. So <laughs> there are all kinds of things that can happen uh, depending on what's happening. Yes, yes, look forward. What's the blacklist? That means you're basically uh, a dildo. Sorry, Zo. You made the list. I'm on the list too, though. So, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, feel free. This has all been built. Our, our design ideas, because Drama Time is the big one we wanted, we felt needed a big coat of paint. Um, it, we basically have the same thing. We just changed the color of the background for the last, like, four years. Uh, so, the idea of all of this is pretty simple. is for you guys to contribute and have fun with it uh, while we're telling stories and all that kind of stuff. Especially to the live audience. We wanted you guys to be as involved as possible. Uh, in one way or another. So that's why it's all built. It exists in files and we can modify it, change it. Anything you don't like, let us know uh, and we'll do what we can with it. So that's the idea behind it. Another news, we are literally like five days away now from patch 8.3, the final mega patch of uh battle for azeroth battle for azeroth is coming to an end uh <laughs> we are in the last legs of battle for azeroth uh 8.3 looking tremendous still carries the problem of essences that is still a thing that's yet to be resolved we have been keeping our peepers on that ptr to see what they're coming up with but so far nothing but 8.3 in itself looks really good um i posted a video this week in fact the most solo playing fun i'd had in all of bfa uh, with 8.3's new horrific vision content. Very, very fun. <coughs> now, 
That does mean there's going to be another world first race. <laughs> now, <laughs> as I explained to my stream yesterday, uh, before we were on the hunt for a fetus, if you have not played Visage yet, and that's what we were doing, we were hunting for a fetus, um, I was told that there's going to be a big campaign, like a big advertisement campaign for the casters and things. And although the event would be announced to keep my mouth shut as to whether or not I was going. Now then, if any of you have seen the announcement video of the Race to World First, I'm kind of prominently in that under the title of casters that will be there. Like, it literally has a big me with cast, your casters will be there. Uh, so, I then went back to the guys at Method and I was like, it's kind of awkward for me to keep this secret because the announcement video prominently shows me like three times and it says the casters will be there. Just saying, it kind of, you know, me playing dumb, kind of, people are just going, uh-huh, okay. Uh, so, yes, I will be there. <laughs> I had the okay. Yes, I am going to be there. There'll be some sort of bigger announcement on Monday or Tuesday, I believe, uh, as to who else is going to be there. But I can confirm I'm going to be there. Uh, I will be going to Krefeld in Germany at the end of this month for, it, until it dies. I've agreed to stay until it dies, so hopefully not too long for my own personal reasons of being back here and making videos and streaming and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so hopefully the guys do well. So we can probably expect to be there for two resets, something like that, depending on how hard Nazoth is. But I will be there. So they are opening it up again, because it is at the Take TV studios where it was last time, and many of you came down to Krefeld in Germany, because obviously for Euros, it's kind of not that bad uh, to travel around. And so they're going to be doing that again. So at some point, Emma will be coming over. I, I should be able to be available, depending on my schedule with them, uh, as to be out and spend time with you guys. But I, can, I haven't got my schedule yet. So when I do have it, I can be a little bit more upfront about when I'll be there and when the audience gets in there. Because they do let everybody in to come and meet Method, come and meet other people <laughs> who will be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Could be other people that will also be there. I gotta watch my <laughs> watch what I say a little bit. Uh, it's not my event to announce. Uh, so method will be there. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, and other people will be there. So if you are, even if you're not coming down to see me or whatever, uh, then there'll be other people there. So pay attention to methods announcement as to who will be there, uh, and that should be a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> Are we ready to get started? Uh, I'm other people. I hope to see you, Zoe. I really do. We missed you. We missed Dennis. Although I saw Dennis recently, but um, hopefully Matt can come down and all these kind of people. Uh, that would be awesome. Okay, let's start our first story of 2020 with something that is just unfucking believable. Uh, they've given me a title for this, but I'm going to call it the dumbest guild ever. That's what I'm going to call it. Because this story is so unbelievably stupid that it it's painful for me to read it's painful for me to read because it's so fucking stupid like it's painfully stupid uh okay so we need uh monkey man remember all names are chosen from our patreon who are the guys who are providing for youtube content uh so that's why they get that uh and we need a gm uh Let's put Vogler in there. Let's put Vogler in there. All right, Monkey Man and Vogler will be our stars of this little... Literally ever. Dude, like, I'm not exaggerating. I am not Mr. Clickbait. As you guys well know, I'm not Mr. Clickbait. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. Ever. It's so fucking stupid. And I've seen people play on an iMac, right? I I've got experience. I've seen some dumb shit in my time. But this is crazy. <clears throat> this is absolutely crazy. Okay. Here we go. Uh, now, I want to point out, this story has been sent to me three times, but the the final version of it, I believe this is the final version, is new version, my guildie pointed out that I had not, uh, not been clear on how stupid some of my mistakes were. I guess I was trying to hide the reality of my shame. <laughs> so I appreciate that he gave it to somebody else to read and they were like, dude, it was way dumber than that. <laughs> it was way, way dumber than that. You need to turn your shit up. Okay, here we go. Our first story, season five, 2020 drama time. Thank you all for being here and enjoying this after so many years. I still get a big kick out of drama time. It's the perfect way for me to end my week. Let's go. Dear Preacher and your glorious, wonderful chat. Hello. Hello. 
I offer this quick story as a warning to your chat and all your viewers. Nobody needs warning against this. Absolutely zero people in my chat right now and watching this on YouTube would ever fall for this. You dumb bastards. You dumb bastards. If Blizzard contacts your guild and asks to observe your raid, the correct answer is no. Okay. <sighs> Blizzard don't need to ask shit of anyone. Ever. It's their game. They don't need to ask fucking anybody for anything. I have been in many raids that Blizzard has been in. GMs have been in there. They don't ask shit. Right? Do you understand? Blizzard don't have to ask a fucking thing of anybody. Not even out of politeness. They ain't going to do that. Trust me, I've PTR tested. There's no politeness. So the correct answer is, that's a scam. Okay. But still, let's carry on, shall we? I'm an officer in a classic World of Warcraft guild. We cleared Molten Core in the fourth week after launch, and we're still going strong. We look forward to crushing Blackwing Lair. Which, of course, is coming out soon. Now we've seen the announcement date of Black Miller. Our GM is a troll mage named Vogler. Mm. A couple of weeks ago, I got a message on my phone from Vogler. It said, Big news! Discord! ASAP! Bruh! It was 7am on a work day. But I logged in after my shower anyway and found the officer channel. The officer channel just flooded! Flooded, absolutely amazing, buzzing with excitement. Vogler had received an email from Blizzard. Blizz were making a new promotional video for Classic World of Warcraft, and our guild had been specially selected to participate. You absolute fucking morons. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> Vogler explained that she had followed the instructions in the email the night before and had spoken directly with a game master called Monkey Man. Monkey Man had asked Vogler three questions. One, can you kill Ragnaros on Friday at 8pm? Can your guild kill Ragnaros in a single pull with 35 players? Do you want to be on television? You know what's so ballsy about this? This is obviously a ninja looter. A good opportunity to push this little button here. As you can see, our ninja looter is outside the building. He's looking ready to go square. The cool thing about this is he, this, this guy had the fucking cheek. The cheek. The fucking cheek. To actually set his own time and raid spots with the guild he was about to abuse. The stones. The stones. To make it convenient to himself and his friends. The fucking stones on this guy. Unbelievable. Vogler had of course replied, Yes, we can do all of those things. She, sa she said Monkey Man was so pleased with her enthusiasm that he gave us the gig on the spot. They've been chosen, team. They have been chosen. This was indeed very exciting for us all. Not one of you? Really? Not one of you thought to Google, does Blizzard ever ask to observe your raids? Like, just that simple Google. Because you know what? If Blizzard did that, people would post about it. Yeah, Blizzard email you and ask you about it, right? There would be a forum post somewhere that would back this up. Hey, maybe log on to a website called twitch.tv. Speak to people who are, I don't know, in the World First Guilds. Easily. Or in the MDI. Or the top world PvPers. You know, people Blizzard might have wanted to contact about these things. And ask them the question. You could do that in about 30 seconds flat. Maybe do that. I don't know. But that's up to you. <clears throat> anyway. It was indeed very exciting news. Friday was only a few days away. As I logged off to go to work, the other officers were preparing to announce this big news to the guild. I spent the whole day with my chin held high, aw, telling everyone with even a passing interest in gaming that I was going to be on TV. <laughs> oh my god, this is so sad. <laughs> we have to laugh. We can't not laugh, you dumb bastards. We have to laugh. Nine hours later... 
I return to a scene of pure devastation. The guild roster was depleted. At least 10 raiders had quit. Vogler was offline. And only the shell-shocked officers were still there in AFK. The Discord chat log told the story. The announcement had gone well. Oh, it had. Don't think they left because of how dumb their officer team was. No, no, no. That's not what happened, ladies and gentlemen. People didn't go, is it you guys for fucking real? And quit the guild on the spot. That's not what happened. Oh, no, no. The problem was, of course, everybody wanted to be on TV. We all want to be part of the big event. Of course, not enough spots for everyone. Our guild roster had around 50 people, which meant at least 15 of them wouldn't be allowed to be on TV. (laughs) Around lunchtime, Vogler had posted her plans and raid roster. Now, of course, Monkey Man only wanted to record us killing Ragnaros. Why would we bother with these other plebeian bosses? Mm, Yes, yes. That's all he wants for the video. She explained... "Uh, So our normal Thursday raid, which was the organized one, that would clear to Major Domo. And then on Friday, our normal raid would kill Domo at 7 to summon Ragnaros. Then, 35 players will kill Ragnaros at the appointed time of 8 p.m. The first problem, of course, was the nature of the rosters. Vogler had included more than 10 players in our clearing raids that would never see Ragnaros that week and would never be part of the Ragnaros big TV ad. She explained that this was to ensure that the players in the Ragnaros group were the creme de la creme. The best of the best. Only those worthy of being on one of Blizzard's advertisements. And these people would get the full set of buffs, including the LBRS buff. And those guys would be as fresh as possible, ready to slay. It caused anger, of course, and disappointment. Of course, they were being excluded. Some of those subbing out still needed loot from Raggy. And they were saying things like, why should I clear the whole raid? Why should I clear the whole raid when then miss Ragnaros loot just so other people can be in a video who don't need any loot. And then a warlock brought up, I still better get DKP, which is, of course, the biggest issue we're dealing with at the moment. If I am not a part of the Ragnaros kill team, do I still receive my DKP for this? Big concern, big problems are afoot in the guild. But this isn't the biggest problem. It's not the biggest problem. The big problem was the special set of rules. Special set of rules for the raid that Vogler posted alongside the roster. Because, of course, this is professional. This is for Blizzard. We need some special things in place to make the video look as good as possible. This is for everybody's benefit. Our guild will be raiding for the whole world to see. Imagine. Imagine. She explained that she intended she was going to run a tight setup, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yes, we must be at our best. Sunday best. A full board of consumables for every player. Flasks, elixirs, food, pots, the whole business. Number two. Nobody except officers and tanks are allowed to speak or chat on Discord for the duration of the recorded kill. Now, I assume this is going to be pre-submerge on Ragnaros. So that means you mustn't key up for about 50 seconds. Which is definitely very, very strict ruling. I could not abide by that in my entire life. If there was to be movement during the fight, if you needed to move from your spot, okay, players needed to stay in class groups and would all move together as one to make it look better for the video. Mm, mm, Important, important. And of course, rule number four, and this is the most important one that we must all abide by. Absolutely nobody, and I mean nobody, was allowed to stand within 10 yards of Vogler at any time or for any reason. This was to make sure that she would be clearly visible during the recording. (laughs) When your pixelated NPC is about to shoot to stardom, it's important that it maintains clear focus for the whole world to see, because this, and next stop, the Ellen show. Without question. Without question. Hey, are you that Torn Druid that was in the Molten Core advert? Come over here. Let's have a chat. 
Any failure to follow these rules would result in a raid kick and a loss of DKP. Every one of Vogler's rules produced arguments. We don't use any consumables in Molten Core. It's a waste of fucking gold. Why does it matter if we talk? They're not recording our comms. <laughs> what the fuck kind of raid moves around in class groups? Stay away from you so you can be special? Are you fucking serious? All legitimate questions, actually. All legitimate questions. <laughs> what the fuck does it matter if we speak? By the time I had the full story, Vogler was back. I invited her into a private channel to talk. Let's, let's, let's smooth this over. She was very upset. After a little discussion, she agreed that while the video was exciting, it wasn't worth destroying the guild, of course. We dispensed with the rules. We made some adjustments to the roster, and I spent the evening contacting the lost raiders and sewing our shredded guild back together. But here we are. Friday has arrived. This is it. Our big moment. Our guild was ready. Our team of 35, with a few volunteer assistants, ran through at 7pm to knock off Domo to summon Ragnaros. Those not invited got full DKP, so rest easy, audience. At 8pm, we were in position around Ragnaros, when Vogler invited Monkey Man to the raid, and gave him raid leader. <laughs> How did this work? How the fucking hell, man? We greeted Monkey Man with a chorus of happy welcomes and he thanked us for agreeing to help. The Discord channel was clogged with onlookers as we described what he looked like. He was a plain orc warrior dressed in a purple robe and hood. For more similarly dressed people, four more similarly dressed people joined the raid and arranged themselves around Ragnaros' cave. Of course, Monkey Man explained that these are the film crew and not to worry about them. Before we knew it, it was time for the pull. Thankfully, Monkey Man did our countdown. Overcomes Vogler prayed to the gods. Please, please God, bless us. Let this go well. And ladies and gentlemen, it did go well. Oh, it did. Very well. We slaughtered Ragnaros before the submerge. We hooted and cheered like a new guild on their first kill. What an achievement. Embarrassingly, I, the author, had died. <laughs> he died of Ragnaros. Had died to a knockback during the fight. With the LBRS buff as well? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. My corpse was high on one of the rocks. And from the vantage point I watched... As Monkey Man ran forward towards Ragnaros as he knelt down, I got a strange feeling in my stomach. Why was he bothering to loot if he was just filming? And then it happened. Monkey Man's rogue assistant received a Peridition's Blade. His mage assistant received the Netherwind Pants. Monkey Man himself took some leg plates of Wrath and every other piece of loot Rag had to offer. And then they all halfed out and left the raid, but not before Monkey Man said one last thing in our raid chat. LOL! With six, six O's. Mm. Mm. Silence overcame the raid. Followed quickly by confused grunts. And soon someone said, Vogler, how did you know they worked for Blizzard? <laughs> now we're asking that question. Now that feels like a relevant question, doesn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Exactly how, is this just a guy? It turns out, she didn't receive any confirmation. And, shockingly, they did not work for Blizzard at all. I can only imagine the deluge of abuse that our guild heaped upon uh, heaped upon Monkey Man and his crew. You blamed him. You know you know who shouldn't be blamed for this. Honestly, I'm not... I, I'm not. Look, I'm not a victim blamer. But you guys are totally at fault at this. This is absolute fucking madness. Absolute fucking madness. You got played like a two-year-old. You are worse than when I pretend throw things for my dog. I'm serious. That's how dumb this is. Like when I fake throw things for my dog and he goes and looks for it. That's what this is. That's how bad this is. <coughs> they had, of course, put most of us on ignore, including me. We reported the situation to real Blizzard, but we don't know what happened to them, if anything. <laughs> 
Fogler. Oh, no. Sad news, though. Fogler has barely been seen online since that raid. We hope she has a Merry Christmas. Oh! That's really sad. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Big S for that one. But the best part is, we are not the first to be hit. Our server has six guilds clearing Ragnaros Weekly, and we know that at least another one has been taken in by Monkey Man and Friends to make a promotional video. <laughs> I'm mad that we fell for it. I'm mad that our guild went through the ringer over absolutely nothing. And I'm also a bit mad at Vogler. But now a little time has passed. I can't be mad at Vogler. How could I be angry at a dude with such a massive... Oh, I can't be mad at Monkey Man. How could I be angry at a dude with such massive, massive balls? Correct. Correct. And thank you for reading my story. Welcome to 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to 2020. And good God, please. Friends. I beg of you, I beg of you, don't fall for such ridiculous nonsense. I Please don't make me read stuff like that. It's too painful. <laughs> it's just so bad. Oh, Mankind is doomed, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much, right? We're doing the names as we go through this. Um, this one's just called Guild Drama, uh, but I'm going to give it a more appropriate name. Don't overhelp. I imagine some of you in my chat right now, with many years of uh, World of Warcraft experience, have overhelped your guild. You've done too much. You expect, you probably built up some sen sense of entitlement. Like, you deserved some sort of respect, or you deserved to have something, you know, something happen that just never materialized. And, uh, yeah, overhelping is a bit of a thing. Overhelping. I mean, you're basically, you're getting ready to be stepped on. Let's be careful. Helping is great. Overhelping can, especially if you expect something for it. If you overhelp, but you don't expect anything for it, fair play to you. Fair play to you. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Before I begin, I just want to give some background information about myself. I've been playing since vanilla in a family guild. Of course, you, ooh, in a family guild. <laughs> I played with all my brothers, father, uncles, and cousins, we were a strong 20-man core for the tail end of Vanilla all the way up until Cataclysm. We focused on progression, and when Heroic came out, we were, uh, we were readily swapped over. And our focus was always trying to down the hardest content. Nerds. Fucking nerds. Towards the end of Kata, most of my older cousins had graduated college and basically retired from World of Warcraft due to uh, a loss of severe free time. Mm, Fs for free time. With their children not playing, uh, my uncles started to leave one by one. Until on heroic spine of Deathwing, never forget, progression, my family guild had more or less dissolved. I tried my hand at leading the fragmented remnants, recruiting more people, but after only seeing 20 people online for raids, I lost all motivation and decided to take a break until Warlords of Draenor. Let me just say that I am leaving a lot of details out because they pertain to the, to most of those involved personal lives. Anything that seems fuzzy for me to remember clearly or isn't collaborated by at least two to three of my guildies, I have left out the story. I am not a saint in this story. Not a saint whatsoever. In fact, there were so many red flags, it's kind of funny how stupid I was not to see them. Hey, 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 Arthur. At least you're not stupid enough to think Blizzard's going to come and film your raid and need five raid spots. Think about it. Not that bad. I also made a large chunk of mistakes, but I'll leave that up to your all glorious viewers to decide who is at fault. It's judgment time, ladies and gentlemen. A long time IRL friend of mine convinced me to come back to WoW. So I leveled through Walls of Draenor, figured out garrisons, <laughs> tough stuff, and hit max level right as Hellfire Citadel was released. I myself had just started college, so I found myself with all the free time. All the free time in the world. So naturally, I spent most of it playing World of Warcraft. My IRL friend had joined a raiding guild who was 5 out of 11 heroic. Go fiend? I think. And was struggling to fill members. So he had me come along. Oh. <laughs> we will call the guild in question. Oh, you guys can choose the guild in question. ESH. <coughs> mm, Gorfiend? I feel like it's Gorfiend, right? It's Gorfiend was number six, I think. You guys can choose the guild name for me. And we're the Sphincters. Alright, your guild is called the Sphincters. It's not the name he's given me here, but that's fine. <laughs> 
My IRL friend had some real life complications, so he more or less stopped playing WoW. An age old story. Only logging on a few hours once or twice a month, so I kept raiding with these guys in Sphincter and quickly became friends with most of them. I was playing an arcane mage. Of course you were, mate. HFC arcane mage. Skills. Look at this guy. And I quickly became friends with two other people who were both playing Frost. They were both officers in the guild. But only... Let's get our first name in here. Our prominent name shall be... Uh, ooh. Zarathinia. Zarathinia. Lovely name. Oh, put it on the other side. Absolutely embarrassing. 2020 off to a rocking start. Absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. Zarathinia. Right. But only Zarathinia was an IRL friend of the guild master. After about two months of progression, we're eight out of 11 heroic. Ooh, boss nine. Is that the, the toss the thing, boss? But I had more or less been spending every day until 3 to 4 a.m. in comms shooting the shit with the officers. The other Frost Mage officer, I'll call him. Oh, here we go. Dejani. We'll call him Dejani. Never spoke. Tyrant Valhari? Yeah, could be. He would only ever type responses in officer chat. The Jani and I had grown, quite, had grown quite close, but and are still great friends to this day. Years later, Zarathinia and the Guild Master Raid Leader. Oh, our Raid Leader is uh, da -da -da, Jim Bob. <laughs> Classic. All right, Jim Bob's our Raid Leader. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Sounds like the good Raid Leader of Sphincter. I like that one. <clears throat> We were quite close. Uh, Zarin Thinner and the guild master, Jim Bob, talked about how we needed to recruit for stable mythic progression. Jim Bob and Zarin Thinner thought that they were the absolute gift to the raiding community. They had been blessed by the gods with the ability to push keys in World of Warcraft. And the only reason, the only reason that they're not currently 11 out of 11 mythic is because of everybody else. <sighs> they just don't have the people. They don't have the people who could meet their demands or raid at their really weird raid times. We raided 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. That's late. Basically an hour after the majority of guilds on my server, but they were both adamant that their IRL schedule is what is holding them back from great success, despite the fact that they never really pushed recruitment. I was becoming close, all right? Got a good bunch of people. We're doing some progress. I was comfortable with the officers. And I asked, hey, I'm online during the day. Do you want me to try and get some recruitment going? I can make a macro that would get the best of the best out of trade chat. For real. I can type it. I can show it to you. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to spam it. It's going to be fucking cool, dude. We're going to have some big, big nuts up in this raid. They readily agreed. And I was given officer rank. And I was put in charge of all recruiting. I crafted carefully my macro. I sent it off to Jim Bob, the GM. I tested the waters of trade chat. I stayed up that day until 6am talking to Jim Bob about his plans. What do we want from the guild? What's the goal? So when people talk to me, I know what to say. Please keep in mind though. Every decision I make going forward is not only with his consent. I double checked but with his direct guild master approval. All right, he's got the stamp. Do what you need to do. Many of the policies I will be introducing to the guild in the future are actually directly from him. His ideas. I simply implemented them. I had come from a guild scenario for five years, basically doing whatever I could do to bring the guild's vision to reality. Jim Bob and I had an incredibly long discussion about what he wanted this guild to be. How he wanted the rules to be. And finally, how he wanted to be a mythic progression guild. So I went to work on recruiting, ladies and gents. I went at it. Every night, Jim Bob and I would stay up till 5 or 6 a.m. talking about the future of the guild. What the fuck are you guys talking about? And how he wanted out of it. And what he wanted out of Why are you spending hours talking about the future of a guild? And me consistently consistently asking his opinion or approval on the decision I made regarding recruiting. Two weeks. Two weeks after my promotion, we down heroic Don Archimonde and are officially 
11 out of 11 heroic stamp that bitch stamp it <sighs> on our very first kill Xyranthia gets the staff and also decides at the end of the raid that he has too much IRL responsibilities to effectively raid every day so he's only going to raid on Tuesdays now <laughs> got my loot I'm out of this bitch bye 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 Recruitment became much easier. Oh, what we're we doing? Starting Mythic Progression? What's that? Mythic Progression. Sorry, I'm busy now. So busy. It's unbelievable. What's that? You want to clear Jaina for mounts? Busy. So busy. Like, unbelievably busy. I've got to go. Recruitment became much easier after us being 11 out of 11 heroic. And every time I had a potential recruitment, I ran them past Jim Bob before their trial ever ended. We were slowly pushing to the required 20 people. When Jim Bob informed me privately... Need a word. I've got to put more hours into my family business because they're in danger of closing. Jim Bob is still able to make it to raids and we are easily beating Don Archimonde in a single raid night. A couple of weeks pass and I log on to World of Warcraft and hop on comms because I see a very unfamiliar name talking to Jim Bob and I wanted to discuss a recruit's trial with him. Jim Bob introduces Duncan to me. Duncan, who hasn't been mentioned till now, Duncan is the official guildmaster, not the substitute guildmaster. Oh, yeah. That's right. The big guy from upstairs has come down. He is Jim Bob's oldest IRL friend. He had left the guild to pursue mythic progression in a hard stock 8 out of 11 mythic guild. Best we heard was but best was best. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Duncan has heard we are 15 of 20 people for Mythic and has come back on his fresh max level rogue to help us start Mythic. What a guy. What a guy, Dunk. I managed to recruit a female Dispriest healer and her brother a rep paladin. We now officially had a roster of 18 people on Tuesdays. And I convinced Jim Bob and Duncan to pug the other two so we could start Mythic Hellfire Citadel. That's it. Yeah, we're going in. 18 strong. Hellfire Assault. Mano a mano. Mythic mode. Bring that shit. The past two weeks, we had been hard smashing Hellfire Assault and essentially feeding all the rogue loot to Duncan so he's decently geared. He decides then, on his own, but being the official GM, he has this right, we aren't yet geared enough to start any form of mythic progression. What we really need, especially my freshly rolled alt, uh, is uh, another two to three weeks, depending on drops that I get, to efficiently down some mythic bosses. Uh, we're just not geared enough yet. What we really need to do is just keep farming heroic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. <clears throat> Xyranthia, the good old IRL frost mage, decides he has his entire bis. So... He no longer has the motivation to do heroic. He's going to leave. But call him when we're doing mythic. All right? Peace. So we're down to 17 people. Jim Bob calls for an officer meeting on Wednesday after our raid. He informs us that for the foreseeable future, he's not going to be attending any raids. <laughs> Duncan informs us he's not going to attend raids either until we start mythic. So, <laughs> Big Dunk strolls in out of nowhere, gets all his gear on his rogue, then decides we don't have enough gear to raid Mythic. So he's going to wait until you're going to start Mythic. And uh, if everybody else could gear up these trials and recruits, that would be awesome. Give him a call when we're doing Mythic, when it's worth his fucking time. Right? Because I tell you what, as a GM, it is not worth my time helping our guild. Right? Call me. Call me. Mm. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this feels like a fucking red alert. That's what this feels like. It feels like a red alert. We are on red alert status right now. Because this guild is full of bastards. This guild is 100% full of bastards. Alright? 100% full of bastards. And we need to deal with this situation right now <clears throat> jim bob says i'm in charge of the guild duncan gives jim bob jim bob back the guild master rank and leaves on his rogue that we have geared 
to rejoin the 8 out of 11 Mythic Guild so he can learn strategies that he can then use for our progression. <laughs> Every day I am recruiting. Why are you doing this? Every day I'm recruiting and having daily officer meetings with the other two officers uh, who are Zoranthia. I think it's Dajani. And we decided to personally host the guild's weekly mythic dungeon runs to make sure there's an officer in every mythic plus. Oh, mythic, mythic dungeon as it was in Wad. Each of us having three decently geared max leveled alts. So we split off and we do three to four, four out of four mythic dungeons a week for guildies who need gear. Now, Dajani and Zoranthia and I decide to create a new loot system. Because many of our raiders are getting fed up with our quasi-loot council, quasi-free-roll system. We decide we're going to put some raid rules in. Alright, you see the manifesto? <laughs> this is what we need here, guys. We need this. We need a manifesto. Alright, we're going to solve the problem. <laughs> our loot system will now be decided on performance slash seniority slash contribution to the guild loot. Hmm. We decided we're going to create a Google Doc. Yes, we need a Google Doc. We need a Google Doc of every boss's drop and assign the loot drops to various members based on their needs. We showed the Google Doc to Jim Bob and he approves of the new loot system because he feels like it will keep us from having pointless loot drama. We make the guild announcement and publicly share the Google Doc for everybody. If anybody has any complaints about their assigned loot, they're free to talk to Jim Bob or myself. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through every drop. We're going to figure out who it's best for. And the next one that drops is yours. And it's got your name next to it. You're all square. Don't need to worry about it. So with everybody leaving, <laughs> we're a strongish 14-man core now. Mythic around the corner, I promise. And the female dis priest. Okay. All right. Here she comes. Here she comes. Can we have double red alert? <laughs> Here she comes. Uh, let's throw in... Uh, uh, let's throw in... Oh, Eva Kelly. Yeah, Eva Kelly. Yeah, we need double red alert. Here she comes. Mm, gonna fix this problem right up. <laughs> Eva Kelly starts to spend more and more time in comms. She's officially introduced to Jim Bob, who comes on every day around 2am to talk to me about guild matters and give his yes or no on suggestions. Jim Bob and Eva Kelly live only about 20 minutes from one another, same age, like the same things, and are both single. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I think we can cancel Red Alert. Let's cancel Red Alert for now. Uh, let's do that, but maybe we should uh, turn it up to sexy time. Mm, 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 mm. We are at full level Poon Alert. All right, let's keep this baby rolling. Let's keep it going. Oh, yes. <sighs> what I didn't know at the time is that both of them started seeing each other immediately. Like, no pause. Like, straight in there. All right? Absolutely straight in there. Like, no questions asked. No lies. No bullshit. Straight there. We like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're Jim Bob Duncan... Uh, and Zoranthia out, gone from the raids. The others, the other officers decide I'm in charge of being raid leader. Great, and all the loot. This is going to be the beginning of the fucking end. I had been given sole power to hand loot out. I'm the only person with power of editing the Google Doc. The only raid members who complained about this were Eva Kelly and her brother. The rest of the raid approved of my performance seniority contribution to the guild loot. So due to typical hellfire burnout, we see a couple of people leave every three to four weeks. And I'm trying to hold on to what we have. And I'm consistently recruiting. But most of our recruits never make it past our trial period. They're just not good enough for Hellfire Citadel. Our trial period is two weeks. We run through two complete Hellfire Citadels on Heroic and basically decide, are you good enough for Mythic? Every recruit I talk to Jim Bob about for once two hours show logs, talk about their personality, their commitment, but most of them don't make his personal cut. So we decide we're going to find someone else. Basically, I'm going to find someone else. It's quickly becoming apparent to most of the senior guild members that something fishy is going on. We keep getting recruits, but they don't stay. Many of them start to complain to me, and I simply inform them that they're not the right fits for our guild mentality. 
They want different things than the vision of the guild. We are trying to make a certain environment, you see. You know, a place that suits us all. A place where everybody feels comfortable. Everybody is committed to the same goal. Most of the guildies think I'm talking shit. <laughs> they asked the Johnny and others what the fuck is going on. They informed me. They informed those people though. Look, he doesn't decide who stays in the guild. It's nothing to do with him. It's really Jim Bob who's kicking all these people. All questions about why trials aren't staying stops for me. But Jim Bob is starting to get barraged by questions because our guys want Mythic. And for some reason, we're not getting there. Can we keep kicking people? Due to the IRL officers never coming to raid anymore and our slow death of members, the Jani and myself decide it's time to have a chit chat about how are we going to keep our current members? How do we keep them motivated to stick around with our constant revolving door of players? We ultimately decide on Dajani's suggestion. We're gonna have an attendance reward system, everybody. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have an attendance. So let's let's oh let's downplay the sexiness here. <clears throat> I assume my wife's home. The higher your attendance, the higher your priority on all loot drops. If you miss two to three raids in a row. You are not eligible for loot until you complete an entire raid. Now, this is my personal thoughts. If people have stopped coming to the raid, telling them they can't have loot, which they're clearly not asked about anyway, doesn't really help. Because you know how you definitely don't get any loot by not being in the raid. And these guys are already not in the raid. That's science. That's what that is. That's science. Okay? That's just a straight up science of the situation. If people are already not logging in at all, telling them they can't have loot if they don't attend, ain't a big deal. They don't really fucking care. They're not interested at all because they're not coming anyway. We were having massive attendance issues. And we were hoping this system would encourage people to log on. Because if everybody was here, we would have 15 people for the 20-man raid. And then we would have enough to pug some mythic bosses. Amazing. I volunteered myself to bring this idea to Jim Bob in our nightly meetings. Hoping he would approve of it so we could start pugging Mythic. And then, imagine, if we do this, it's going to bring back Big Duncan. It's going to bring back is it Jim Bob. It's going to bring all these dudes back. And I had a long discussion where he agrees on the system. It's important to me that he gives the go-ahead. We decide to wait one more week to implement the new rule. Give everybody a time. Since it was already Monday and people have made plans for Tuesday's raids, he wants me to announce it after Tuesday's raid. The guild is now down to 11 people. Things are bad. And three to four other 11 out of 11 heroic guilds are starting to recruit at our exact, ta exact same time slot. Many of our older members and old trials have joined these other guilds. And these other guilds are doing mythic progression now. Jim Bob logs on and manages to recruit six brand new wow players not like brand new to the server brand new wow players they had all just left guild wars 2 where they had been in a raid guild and they wanted to try raiding in world of warcraft <laughs> yes <laughs> great success <coughs> jim bob told me and the other officers explicitly they're not allowed to come to our tuesday heroic raid they haven't even done mythic dungeons yet they will come to the Thursday alt normal mode raid. Yvette Lee invites them to the raid and I whisper her and question why. She informs me it's rude. It's rude not to invite people who are members of the guild to the raid. And I've already kicked five to six trials from the guild. If we keep doing things my way, we won't even have ten people left and we'll have to start pugging heroic. Please keep in mind that all the trials that I kicked, this is the author, well, because Jim Bob told me they were shit. The man she is currently dating. Which I did not know at the time. I informed her they're not allowed at the heroic raid. Jim Bob said we can't bring these new dudes. She's not an officer and she has no place to invite them. This is Jim Bob's guild. I'll follow his instructions. They need to be tested in normal mode first. Then we'll bring them to heroic, right? 
Five minutes. Five minutes later, I get a text from Jim Bob telling me to let the newcomers come to the raid. <laughs> but they're definitely not allowed any loot. They're definitely not allowed any loot over the core members, all right? Definitely not. The raid goes fine. We kill Archimonde and the newbies are super excited to have a head of the curve. Right after downing Archimonde and passing out loot, I announced the new attendance policy. Everyone's on board and are quite readily accepting of the idea. The newbies ask me privately in the pink. What do we need to do to improve, bro? How do we get better? Can you help us with Mythic Dungeons? Yeah, can you do it? So me and the other officers and Johnny, we give them tips. We stay up till 3 a.m. running them through all Mythic Dungeons. And all in all, I feel like these six newbies had drive, willingness, motivation to improve. If all goes well with these new dudes, we'll have 17 people. If Duncan and Jim Bob come back, that's 19 people. Count it. Tonight is the first time in four months of me being in this guild that Jim Bob did not log on to comms. I was worried about him, so I kept sending him messages. Is everything okay, dude? No answer. I got a text around 1pm the next day from Jim Bob saying I needed to come on comms. I hop in. I join a private channel where Jim Bob, Duncan, the whole crew's there, Zoranthia's there. Eva, even Eva Cal is in there. She's not even an officer. Big dunk keys up, though. <clears throat> Excuse me, dickhead. What is your role in this guild? Um, I said, I'm the recruitment guy and I'm the temporary raid leader while Jim Bob's, Jim Bob's helping out his family business. Uh, incorrect, Duncan tells me. You've got a new job. Just recruitment. All right? I do not have any authority to decide who gets loot, who comes to the raid, and who gets to stay in the guild. That's Duncan and Jim Bob's job. And I am massively overstepping my fucking mark. Do you hear me? He then asked me to apologize. He says, if I don't apologize for the way I have been behaving, then there's no option but I have to be removed from the guild. Uh, so I did apologize. I tell everybody there that I'm sorry for overstepping my bounds and I'll back off, I guess. Why did you apologize? Why? Why? <laughs> I then asked, who wants to be in charge then? So I could tell them you want to talk to them. I'm not, <laughs> as I'm the only guildy with their phone numbers. Duncan informs me everybody's coming back. This is it. Big, big moves. They're all coming back and it is unnecessary for things like that and it's unnecessary for suggesting that other officers be in charge. He tells me he needs to discuss with the other officers and lets me know that I am now on official officer probation. And <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, the question marks are correct. The fuck is officer probation? What the fuck? Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. <clears throat> and if I don't, if anything I do that is not perfect, I'm out. Not once during this entire discussion did Jim Bob correct Duncan. Neither did you, you pussy. Where were you saying? What the fuck are you talking about? Jim Bob asked me to do this shit. He's the guild master. Where was that sentence? Where was that? Where was that? You were waiting for him to rescue you? Fuck that. Fuck that. No way. <clears throat> I texted Jim Bob. Ah, oh, no. He sent the message outside. Asking, can you call me? I want to talk privately. He called me a few minutes later and basically told me that I was not following what he had told me to do. I was doing whatever I wanted to do when he was gone. And he has been getting complaints about me every single day for the past two months from random guildies. Of course you have. Can you show me a screenshot of one of them? Just one. I mean, they happen every day. You don't have any right now? Don't worry about it. Get tonight's ones. How about tomorrow's ones? Tell you what, I'll give you a fucking week and you send me the fucking screenshot. How about that? All right, I'll give you to the end of the year. No problem at all. Sorted. Easy. He's ignored them mostly. But having the entire raid team, including the new players, complaining about how much of an asshole I was after Tuesday's raid 
And if I wasn't kicked, they were going to leave. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. And Jim Bob knew it was time for him to get involved. He told me none of the raiders liked the new attendance policy. And when they voiced their complaints to me privately, I had told them to fuck off. <laughs> Which has never happened. Not a single person had complained publicly or privately to me. He told me point blank that the only reason I'm still with the guild is because he likes me. And he knows I wouldn't do what I did with him personally there. To keep me in check. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God Jim Bob's back to keep me in check. Whatever. I focus my attention on recruitment. I get four new players who are leaving their mythic guild due to being hard stuck on Gorefiend and were looking for a fresh guild to progress with. They inform me their requirements were we must be punctual to raid and they want all the officers in attendance who will be raiding on the mythic team. They want to see if we're serious about progression because they don't want to join a guild that doesn't know what they want. I inform the officers we have these four mythic geared players ready and willing to join. They want to trial on Tuesday's raid to see if we are serious about mythic raiding. So I asked them all, please make arrangements to come to the raid. Jim, Bob and Duncan agreed to be there and inform me they'll get Zoranthia to log on as well. Let's fast forward then to Tuesday, the big raid. 8.50 p.m. invite time. The guildies start spamming one. <laughs> Asking for, who still does this? <laughs> Hopefully you guys don't do this anymore. The guildies start spamming one, asking for invites to the raid. <laughs> I do not see a single one of the IRL officer team online. <sighs> so I start sending the invites out. It's now officially 9pm when we start pulling. Our new mythic boys are asking, where the fuck is the rest of the group? I politely inform them they must be running late. As you can imagine, we're currently risk missing Duncan. We're missing Jim Bob. We're missing Zoranthia. We're missing Eva Kelly and her brother. It's now 20 past nine. We've beaten Assault and Iron Reaver. We're on our way to Cromrock. The trials asked me politely, where are the officers? And I told them, oh, they messaged me. Something came up. They'll be late to the raid. This never happens. It must be an emergency. You're lying for these people now? That's what you're doing. These people who just shit on you, like last week, you're lying for them to cover them. That's what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Can you work for me? Because I like it. <laughs> I like it. We clear our command and the trials politely inform me that because your officers can't show up to a sing the first raid they were, the they they were in, that they're not going to be raiding with us again. They leave the raid group and I ask if any guildies want to do Mythic Dungeons. 10 minutes after the raid end. Just 10 minutes. Eva Callie logs on. So I send her the pink. How come you weren't here for the raid? She knew we had trials who were serious about mythic raiding coming today. Did something happen? Question mark. She doesn't respond to me. But her name does pop in the guild chat asking how the raid went. <laughs> Ignored. She asked guild chat. Anybody want to run some mythic dungeons? She needs someone, a priest and a hunter. A couple of minutes later, Jim Bob logs on. So I send in the traditional game of, game of greeting in such a scenario. Six question marks. Well, he does reply. Says he wasn't able to make the raid. He's running out family business. I already know this. And also tells me, why am I being such a dick and blowing up his phone when I'm at work? I tell him, because you said you would be here. We lost trials because of this. And I shouldn't have arbitrarily agreed to be there. I should have passed the conversations off to himself or to Duncan. I'm the reason. He then tells me, I should know better. And I am the reason why those four mythic players left the guild. And that I should have explained to them the IRL commitments that I have. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, he's still staying in the guild. He's still there. <laughs> the next week, the next week, still not leaving. The next week rolls around and all of the IRL officers are here. Celebrate. They've all turned up. What a fucking treat this is. We're so blessed. The newbies ask, why am I not leading in, in comms? And I tell them, Jim Bob is the raid leader. That's, his, that's what he's doing. Duncan, Zoranthia, and Avakali uh, log on a couple of minutes after raid officially starts strolls in 
But Eva Callie is not on her bis geared dispries. She's decided to come on her fresh max level hunter. I pose the question to Jim, Bob, and Duncan. Hey guys, why are we bringing an alt to the main raid? No one responds to me. We down Hellfire Assault and I jokingly say in Discord, congrats to a guildie who run a, ro a roll on an item. But Duncan informs the raid that it's a better increase for Ever Callie's alt and gives it to her. <laughs> who are these fucking people? I questioned, why? Why would you give a piece of loot to an alt over a main? And proceeded to be globally muted in comms. Jim Bob then writes in officer chat that that is a strike against me. One more and I'm out. <laughs> we clear the entire raid without me saying another word in comms. What is wrong with you? Why? Oh my god, man. It's so painful. Oh. <sighs> Did Johnny and the other officer whisper me after the raid? And asked to talk privately. Let me explain something to you in the audience. Alright, we're going to get an explanation, guys. Hold, hold it together. We're going to get an explanation. I was told point blank by Duncan that all officers were in agreement in essentially demoting me from that temporary raid leader spot to just a recruitment guy. That's what he was told by the big guild master, the big man with all the money, all the cards, that everybody wanted me out. He told me he had talked to all the officers and the only reason that Dajani and co couldn't make it to our discussion on that day, the officer meeting, is because they thought we would have had it in the evening and therefore didn't turn up. They had plans during the afternoon. It wasn't until that raid that I told both of them what had happened in the private meeting. And my conversation went, well, you guys decided that I shouldn't even really be in the guild anymore. To which they replied, what the fuck are you even talking about? When did that happen? <laughs> I found out that neither Dajani or any other officer were aware of this officer meeting. They both didn't understand why the officers would have said they were all in agreement without even asking for their opinions. So Dajani wanted to immediately bring the drama to the green. We're going guild chat with this. Let's go big. Let's go huge. Red alert is out. We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> okay. I tell him there's no point. Shut the front door. Let him do his thing. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him go. We're super close to raiding Mythic. We're almost there. All right. Red alert. Oh my god. <sighs> We're so close to raiding Mythic. I love raiding. I like most of the people. And as long as we get to do Mythic raiding progression. It's all good, man. It's all good. Let's just keep going. Dajani informs me that if they keep being such complete pieces of shit. That he's just going to leave. And let everybody know that these guys are complete pieces of shit. He says, fuck that noise. I like you, Dajani. <laughs> You've got Moxie. Next week's raid. A tear token drops. Remember those? Fs. A tear token drops that one of our core raiders has been needing for over a month. On the loot system on the Google Doc, his name is down to receive that token. It goes immediately to Evercali's alt hunter instead. The guild member in question. Why did I not get the token? It's even written down on the Google Doc. Everyone knows I've been waiting for this for fucking months. Duncan says, Google Doc? Google Doc? Fuck you and you Google Doc. We are a loot council. And the council has decided, the council has spoken that Ever Callie needs it. Duncan also said, I have absolutely no idea why you guys have got some Google Doc going on. But I and Jim Bob made it so it doesn't count for anything. So forget your Google Doc. Shove it up your ass. Without pause, not even a moment's breath, not even a whisper of a sniffle, Dajani calls Duncan a cunt.
<laughs> he calls him out in the officer chat on the bias. Zoranthia, the, uh, the, <laughs> and the Zoranthia, the frost mage that hasn't been playing for three months, <laughs> tells the Johnny, the officer who has been in the guild since High Mall, to know his fucking place. Now, I want to be clear on this. The Johnny, who has never used voice comms to speak in over a year in the guild. He has only ever typed. For the first time, I ever, ever heard the Johnny talk and found out that he does, in fact, own a microphone. All the way up until this point, talking every night, playing together for a year, never heard his voice. Keys the fuck up. <laughs> Keys the fuck up and says, I do know my fucking place, you piece of shit. <laughs> He then goes into full rock and roll mode. <coughs> it's time to call out whiny garbage DPS. Loot whores like you, Zoranthia. Zoranthia, you are near the bottom of the damage in our guild. You're behind the fucking trials, who are three weeks of heroic gear. You're on your bis mage, you complete sack of shit. The is kicked from the guild. <laughs> I decided enough's enough. enough. <laughs> I informed your officer chat, hey, look, if Dejani's out, I'm out as well. And then I get kicked from the guild as well. Banned from comms, kicked from the raid. In the next five minutes, the entirety of the raid group, besides, of course, Evercali, Duncan, Zoranthia, and Jim Bob, and her brother, message me all the question marks. The six beautiful question marks that are renowned throughout the world. I try to play it nice. Why? Why are you playing it nice? Screenshot what's happening. Show everybody the proof. Proof. There it is. That's what happened. I politely inform them we've had some differences in opinion. And I will be either making my own guild or finding a new one. As you can imagine, the entire raid group leaves the guild and asks me where do we sign the guild chart. That's cool. Despite being informed that every single raid member had a personal problem with me. Remember, I had been told that the guild was complaining about me left and right. They all willingly left upon my removal. My phone goes. It's Jim Bob. Big text message. I need to come on comms. They've unbanned me. <laughs> I decide sure. And I stupidly join while they're all raging at me. All of them. Duncan informs me that everything I did is just undisputed proof that I was a usurper. <sighs> I never cared for this guild. I only joined to use them to make it my own. At this point, I was actually angry. I would actually got completely angry for the first time and I told him, go fuck yourself. Everything you've been complaining about hasn't even been my fucking idea, you dumb cunt. I followed everything Jim Bob told me to do. Your IRL friend, the one who's pretending nothing happened. All my ideas that you have massive problems with are all his ideas. If you're going to be a whiny bitch, at least be angry at the one who did it, not the scapegoat. I left comms. I left the comm server and made my own guild, which has been together since Legion. All the way until Classic WoW release, where we have made our guild there. Duncan and Jim Bob apparently fell out IRL over what I said in comms that day. Jim Bob ended up leaving the guild with Evercali and her brother to form his own little guild. Evercali and, uh, Ever and Jim Bob are still together to this day. <laughs> Very nice. They made a relationship out of it. <laughs> Uh, it's this day, but Jim Bob and best uh, Jim Bob and his best friend Duncan, who were friends for twenty years, apparently never speak to each other anymore. It wasn't until the end of Legion I found out that Ever Kelly and Jim Bob were dating because one of their guildies was congratulating them on their engagement. <laughs> Ultimately, I learned a lot of what not to do in my time with the Sphinxes. Despite all the crazy bullshit, I wouldn't change the experience. It helped me realize you can't make decisions for others without their knowledge and assume it work out perfectly transparency is the best policy and also standing up for yourself is quite a nice thing to do a round of applause for the story some lessons learned please stand up for yourself in the future god damn it man god damn it man <laughs> that story really hurt me it hurt me as well both of today's stories hurt me internally 
What a great start to 2020. That's what we come for on a Friday afternoon. That's what we enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, 8.3 is just a few days away. I will have as much stuff up as I can for you to enjoy and prepare yourselves for 8.3. It's going to be cool. That is painful. I'll have a beer and relax. The weekend is here. The weekend is here. Thank you, everybody. I will see you again on a Monday with spooky game day. Ooh, let's finish off some games before 8.3 takes over our lives. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great weekend.